Earlier this month, we introduced an exploratory framework that was designed to give discretionary traders a clearer read on the underlying level of risk in Bitcoin. And today for this video, we're going to touch base and do a quick check-in on the framework and explore some of its key signals that make up part of the tool as a whole, and hopefully shed some light on the dynamics of fear and greed and the investor behavior that is currently unfolding. Before we jump into some of the metrics, it's important to establish what we're really defining here as risk, and also how this framework should be thought of in regard to the decision making process. So the first thing to note is that the framework categorizes each metric into four levels. These are very high risk, high risk, low risk, and very low risk. And if you want to understand how the parameters for each metric are defined, then I'll leave a link to the original article below, which goes through each one and explains it in detail. The second and arguably most crucial thing to bear in mind here is that this is a risk assessment framework. It's an indirect tool to help you assess the probability of a potential price correction and not a direct buy or sell signal. For example, if a metric is flashing high risk, it may be pointing towards the fact that there's an abnormally high amount of unrealized profit currently being held by investors, which in turn could point to more short term speculation or profit taking. So it very much fits into the first initial step and gives you an extra edge in terms of awareness around all of the topics that the framework focuses on. So staying on the subject of unrealized profit, we can kick things off with the net unrealized profit and loss or NUPL as it's often referred to, which is a metric that helps us assess whether the market sentiment is veering more towards fear or greed. And with the NUPL currently sitting at 0.62, we can see that it's well above its four year mean, which is this orange line here. And if we zoom in, we can see that it's actually just crossed over this plus one standard deviation threshold, which does indicate an elevated level of risk. However, we would have to see a continuation for it to reach the levels of euphoria that we've seen here in previous bull runs. Moving on to the realized side of the equation, we have the realized profit and loss ratio, which is currently sitting at 19. And this is way above, it's actually over double the very high risk level here of nine. So if we zoom in, we can see that there's been quite a significant increase from the value of four at the beginning of the month. So what this is actually suggesting is that the vast majority of Bitcoin transactions that are currently happening are being executed in profit. And this is prompting us to be aware of the market potentially heading into a phase of demand exhaustion. The next metric that we're going to focus on, I just want to provide a little bit of context around. I feel like it's slightly harder to grasp from the get go in comparison to some of the other ones. This is the miners fee revenue binary indicator or MFRBI, which is much easier to say. And it focuses on the demand for block space. Given the cap block space in the Bitcoin network, a powerful method to gauge demand is by examining the fee market, where a constant growth in demand usually leads to a sustained rise in fees, which is exactly what this metric is looking for. If we zoom in, we can see that the metric has risen by more than a third throughout the month, shifting from very low risk to low risk. So nothing extremely noteworthy here, but it does suggest that there has been a growth in demand for Bitcoin's block space. The next metric in the framework we're looking at is the short term holder supply profit and loss ratio, which we can see has surpassed this red line value of nine, indicating that over 90% of new investors are currently in profit, and as a result, elevating the risk to a very high level. That being said, if we look back over the past few months, this metric is actually sitting lower than what it was back here, back in the days of Bitcoin's ETF speculation, which really does feel like a long time ago now. But it'll be interesting just to keep a close eye on this for future moves, just to see if we are shifting more towards traders acting more cautiously. Last, but definitely not least, we have the long term holder MVRV ratio, which we can see has been on the rise since the start of the year, but it's still sitting firmly in the high risk bracket, which tells us that long term holders are still sitting on significant unrealized profits. So that's all the metrics that we're going to cover for this video. But if you want to learn more and get full access to every metric within the framework, then you can get in touch with us using the link below. As always, we're more than open to feedback with the content that we post on this channel. So if you enjoyed this run through and would like us to check in on the framework more regularly, then be sure to let us know in the comments and we'll see you for the next one.